Hey everybody, Lord Tremendous here, got another battle report here for you. Another 2500 point battle. I think it's fair to assume that from now on all my battles are going to be 2500 points, just simply because I think my group is there. Uh, it is I though, Lord Tremendous of the Ogre Cons versus the Punisher. Uh, the kingdom of the Equitane? Equitine? The, the horse kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys. Uh, this is a uh, rematch, obviously, from uh, the, the first KOE game that I got up against the Punisher here. And, uh, yeah, this is... Uh, oh, man. You know what? I'm not even going to spoil it. I'm just going to get right to it. Here's my list, and it has changed slightly from the last battle report, so pay attention. Or don't, it's completely up to you. I still have my great con, Berserk. He's got the Kagadai's Maul, Yeti Furs, Talisman of Greater Shielding, the Divine Icon, and Headhunter. His kit hasn't changed. It's the kit that I like, it's the kit that I'm going to use, and that's why he keeps on using it. Uh, but yeah, that, that he's also my general. Next up are my hero choices, and this is where the changes really took place. I dropped my great shaman for a couple of regular shamans. I have my first one here, uh, Kaka Shabadu. He's my level 2 wizard. He's got the Tome of Arcane Lore and the Path of Butchery. Uh, honestly, after losing my general, or I'm sorry, my great shaman in my last battle report so quick because of a stupid idea on my part, and losing all my magic, that really hurt. Uh, so I have a dirt cheap uh, level 3. <laughs> kind of. Uh, Shaman here, he's level 2, but with the Tome of Arcane Lore, he's got the ability to take 3 spells, and the Path of Butchery gives him that all, you know, almighty lore attribute that allows him to heal wounds, which is, as far as I'm concerned, better than a ward save. So, my idea here is, I still have all the coverage with 3 spells from the Path of Butchery that I, that I want for my army, uh, but number one, he's a lot cheaper point-wise, and if he dies, I still have a backup shaman, which I'll get to in a second. Okay, it's been a second. Here's my other shaman. He has no name yet because I still haven't fully figured out how I'm going to do him yet. He's a level 2 wizard. He's got the Demonic Heart, Troll Eater, and the Path of Fire. I wanted the Path of Fire because the idea of having somebody who can sling a little bit of magic and take care of chaff or weaker units or even you know units that regen, I, I really didn't have that in my army. This guy provides that. Uh, Demonic Heart is self-explanatory. And I gave him Troll Eater because I wanted to try it out. Uh, I was on Warhammer Weekly where we talked about the big names and I felt that it wasn't fair for me to have such a negative opinion of the name without actually trying it out. So I threw it on my shaman thinking that he was leadership 8 because I'm used to using a great shaman. He is not. He is leadership 7. So you'll see how that goes. But I wanted to run him on his own. I wanted to run him around, have him do stuff uh, independent of a unit because if he sees combat I'm doing something wrong. So that's why I have this, or that's why I have this guy and that's how I plan on running him. Here we have my Khan, and uh, he's obviously my BSB. He's got a great weapon, Mithril Mail, the Gemstone Amulet, and I toyed with giving him a big name, but honestly, I just didn't have the points. But I like this kit, so I'm probably going to stick with it for a bit. And then, of course, I have my favorite, because, you know, I have favorites. My Mammoth Hunter, Lord Tremendous. He's got his Iron Fist, an Ogre Crossbow, Armor of Destiny, Rotten Jaw, and a Tusker. Uh, yeah, the only thing that's different about him is I just realized that he had a Throwing Spear, <laughs> and I changed it over for free to an Ogre Crossbow, because I'm kind of dumb. And I didn't realize all the tools that this guy came with. I like him even more now. For my core, I still have my unit of seven tribesmen. Uh, with, they have the Iron Fist, they have heavy armor, and I gave them a full command uh, with the Flaming Standard. Same reason as before, it's a good little unit, uh, but instead of taking one of my Shaman in it now, I'm going to put my BSB in there, and you'll see why in a little bit. I now have a unit of five tribesmen as well, with Iron Fist, Heavy Armor, Banner Musician, and this is the unit that uh, Kaka Shabadu will go into, which is my Butcher uh, Path shaman. And then I have a unit of four bruisers, butt naked. Uh, my plan with these guys are literally to run them up a flank and just try to go for any targets of opportunity and maybe even as like a heavy chaff type of unit. Uh, sacrifice them if I need to. They're not going to give up a ban or anything like that. And with potentially 12 strength 6 attacks they could do some damage. But uh, I'm just kind of disenfranchised with the bruisers currently because they just take so much damage and a Weapon skill 3, they're not putting out quite as much as I would like the unit to do. 
For my special choices, I got a unit of five Scrappling Trappers, and I've had a lot of people tell me that these guys are no good, they're not worth taking, that they don't do anything. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite little units. I'm not afraid to lose it. I'm not afraid to be bold with it. I, I like this unit. The only thing that is better than one would be two. So... <laughs> And then of course I have my little saber tooth spider, and his job is basically to be a human speed or a, a saber tooth speed bump. And I've got one of my favorite units, my five by mercenary veterans with banner musician, iron fist, lethal strike, bodyguard, and the stalker standard. Because I still haven't gotten around to taking the damn thing off of them and moving my uh, points elsewhere. Of course I have my kin eater, Elizabeth, and my rare choices I have a scratapult. And a Slave Giant, which uh, I really like my monsters, what can I say? That's going to do it for my army list. Next up is my opponent's army list. I play music, I just kind of speed through it, so feel free to pause it at any time to see exactly what he took. And here's deployment. All right, so my plan here was real simple. Just kind of surround him, you know? <laughs> that was really it. I got my Merc Vets, my Tribesmen with my BSB, and my other unit Tribesmen with my character uh, pretty much right in the middle. I got my Giant on the left side with my Bruisers as well on the left flank. Uh, their job is to either get a hold of that Green Knight that's on uh, our left flank there up top, or spin around and get in one of those juicy flanks of any of his units anything at all if nothing more it'd be a speed bump uh, meanwhile I have my little character back there behind the BSB and near the general so he can benefit from the leadership 9 with the rerolls because he's got stupidity I've got saber spider in the middle to obviously speed bump or bait if I can get so lucky Scratapult's on the hill his job is to take out as many of those little infantry bastards as he can before I have to get into combat with him and I got Lord Tremendous way over on the right flank just in case one of those Pegasus decide to get a little crafty a little, a little excited if you will but yeah that was really what I was thinking while I was deploying Here's my opponent's right flank, and he's got his green knight over there, and I've got a unit of trappers. Here's his center. Uh, back left there is his trebuchet. In front of them are some bowmen, and they've got all that other good stuff. He's got his level 4 caster on a pegasus in the back there. In front of them are peasant crusaders, I believe. And I can't remember if there's a character in there or not. Behind him is the grail reliquy, the thing with a banner. And next to him is a unit of aspirant knights, I think. Uh, I I'm pretty sure that's right. And here's his uh, left flank. Uh, from right to left there, there's a paladin on a peg, another unit of a spirit knights, and I think his his big damsel is in that one. Bigger, uh, There's a damsel in that damn unit. Uh, next to them is a unit of peasant warriors. I'm not really sure what they're called. Big brick of just anvil type of stuff. And behind them is another character on a pegasus. I cannot remember if it's his damsel or if the other one was a damsel or if that's his uh, a paladin. I can't remember. It's a character on a pegasus. I can promise you that much. Here's my right flank and I apologize for the pictures. I don't know why my camera decided that the piss yellow filter was the was the way to go with these but it did and I don't know how to fix it. But uh, from right to left there's Lord Tremendous, there's my Scratapult, there's my unit of uh, mercenary vets with my general and there's Saber Spider right next to them. And here's my center. From right to left, there's my tribesmen with my BSB. Behind them is my level 2 uh, Path of Fire Shaman. And next to them is my unit of uh, tribesmen with my level 2 Path of Butchery uh, Shaman in there. Kaka Shabadu. And here's my left flank. Uh, there's my Slave Giant and my Bruisers. 
Alrighty, so here we go. I got to go first because I'm awesome. And uh, top of one after movement, for the most part, uh, I, I shot forward. My scrappers, after a little back and forth, they finally found a sweet spot where they could shoot uh, into his bowman. I wanted to go after his trebuchet, but I'm kind of stupid. I forgot that skirmishers have the light troop rule, which allow them to march and shoot. So here I am trying to maneuver these guys with four inches because I think if they march, they can't shoot. So that's why I'm kind of having trouble with them. I did not realize the full awesome that is my Scrappling Trappers. So in the top left there, they're on that forest or whatever. It's not a hill, it's just a forest. And uh, they're trying to get an angle where they can shoot at the bowmen, but the bowmen can't shoot them or charge them. And his, uh, what's it called, his green knight can't charge them either. So that's kind of why they were like that. If I had realized that they were light troops and they could move and shoot, or march and shoot, then I would have moved them just straight back and had a field day and shot at the trebuchet. But what can I tell you? I learn hard. Uh, other than that, though, everything else in my army fires forward. Uh, literally, just everything moves up as far as it can. I, I need to get in the combat with these guys as quick as I can so that I can put them down as quick as I can. During a magic phase, I get regen off on my giant, and I just did that in case anything shot at him. His 5-up armor is nice, but it's not shit when it comes to, you know, some of the heavier shooting that he might have to take. That he probably will have to take, so regen will help a lot. And then, of course, the lore attribute goes off, making my uh, shaman plus one toughness for at least a turn. Uh, during the shooting phase, I fire my Scratapult at the uh, at the Crusaders, I believe, but it deviates eight inches and ends up hitting the peasants and a little bit of the knights, which... Not terrible, all things considered. And it doesn't do a ton of damage. I end up taking out one of the knights and three of the peasants, but you know what? It's not the model's fault. I'm not rolling great. It was a lot of hits. I just didn't really roll that well for wounds. And, you know, it's a full armor save unless I get lethal uh, lethal strike off. So it was a it was a give or take, but you know what? It's It's four less models I have to deal with, and that's why I bring that thing. Nothing else happens in my turn, so we go over here to bottom of one after movement, and not a ton, not a ton at all. I don't believe my opponent is quite confident with his army yet. Uh, his far right unit of uh, spirit knights or whatever, uh, aspiring knights, whatever you want to call them, try to charge Lord Tremendous, and then they think better of it and fail their charge because <laughs> they're not ready to get their asses kicked yet. Uh, and that's really it for charges. The rest of his army kind of moves up conservatively. One of his uh, paladins on uh, the Pegasus on the right flank there moves move up that formation, a rock formation right there is impassable terrain, so he just kind of lines up to flank charge me, I guess. Uh, I think he's got the dragon lance on that thing, so I think he wants to spit some hot fire at me. Uh, the rest of his stuff moves up slowly, and his uh, pegasus there, uh, that was kind of more right center, shoots over to the left to try to start shooting. It's got the skull splitter magic weapon, so he's going to start shooting at my, uh, what's it called, my trappers to try to finish them off before I take out too much of his stuff, so. That's pretty much it for me. Oh yeah, and his green knight on the left flank there shoots around the forest to try to threaten either my bruisers or my giant. I think it's my giant that he wants to go after. There's a better picture of his unit of knights failing a charge against uh, Lord Tremendous, and that's probably smart for them. Nothing really happens in magic, uh, so we go into shooting, and his bowmen shoot at my bruisers and slip a wound through. Not bad, peasants. Then his damsel, I think it is, takes out one of my trappers using the skull splitter. Since it always hits on fours and it's strength four, wounding on threes, I got lucky that he rolled like pure butt. Had he rolled average, I'd have a lot fewer trappers on the table. Uh, then his tribute takes careful aim at my tribesman, you know, my big one, and direct hits but rolls a misfire. I dodged a bullet here. He ends up rolling a 5 on the misfire chart, which just means that this thing can't shoot this turn. But, uh, I mean, yeah, a 1 or 2 would have been better, but hey, he didn't hit me, and that's what's important. Nothing else happens, so we go over here to top of 2 after movement. And there's some action. Uh, Lord Tremendous, offended by the fact that those knights tried to charge him, show them how it's done, and he charges the crap out of them. Uh, my mercenary veterans, also tired of waiting, charge into the uh, peasants on the right side there. I send, that's it for charges, I send uh, Sabertooth Spider up to block the knights. Now, I knew that his crusader guys, the infantry, could hit this stupid spider, and then overrun and hit my mercenary veterans. I know the angle looks a little weird from here, but trust me, in real life, those those uh, infantry, if they hit the spider, run into my mercs, no problem. Now, I'm not overly concerned about that, uh, because if they do that, 
my guys are, are, are stubborn nine, and I wasn't sure if my VSB was in range or not. I didn't want to measure it to give my opponent that kind of hint, but I figured if that big horde brick would charge into a flank of my mercenary vets and get stuck in just for one turn, because I'm going to beat the crap out of these guys this turn, and then they'll charge into my they'll charge into a spider, kill him, and then run into uh, the flank of my mercenary vets. If I can just hold on for one turn, that gives my tribesmen and uh, both units my tribesmen a beautiful rear and flank charge, possibly even my giant, uh, all those charges into the side there and into the rear and just mutilate that unit before I can do anything else. My mercenary vets are probably going to get killed to a man, but it's going to give me two big horde bricks and whatever characters might be hiding out in them. Not to mention, hopefully, uh, potentially beneficial overruns and, and pursuit charges into the rest of his units. Uh, my bruisers on the left flank there move to block the green knight so he can't charge my giant. My giant moves up, daring something to come after him. And then my trappers move four inches once again because I forget that they can march uh, to shoot at the bowman and the trebuchet. Elizabeth comes on the table. She's going to put some pressure on the trebuchet. And my level two stupid uh, shaman is stupid. <laughs> so, Oh no, he's not stupid this turn. He moves up so he can try to get an angle on that damn Pegasus that's on my right flank. There's a better picture of Lord Tremendous slamming into that unit of knights, and uh, it's going to get bloody. And there's a glorious picture of my mercenary veteran slamming into those peasants, and ooh, the slaughter's going to be fun. Nothing happens in the magic phase. He shuts me down completely. So we go into the shooting phase, and I fire at the Crusaders, and I believe I deviate, but it doesn't matter. I roll a six and end up with a misfire six, which means this guy's taking a wound, and he doesn't shoot this turn. Very frustrating. Over here, almost as if they were pissed off that one of their members got killed and that the uh, Scratapult failed to shoot, they fire away at these bowmen and kill off like half of them. It's beautiful. There's five bowmen left, which is really not much of a threat anymore, so I'm very pleased with the trappers. Then we go here into combat, and uh, it doesn't go that great. He makes a lot of his war uh, armor and ward saves. Uh, I think I only end up killing one of the knights. Uh, so a charge and a wound to his, I think, rank and a banner. He wins this combat by one because he's got a musician, uh, but I make my break check. So not the, not the greatest first round of combat, but I'm still in there. I'm not too threatened by anything else. I think this is still going to go my way. Then over here, my merc mercenary vets make these guys their power bottom. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I think I kill 13 or 14, maybe even more. Uh, in return, they do a single wound. The only reason they stick it out is because I wasn't able to kill a couple more and make them not steadfast. They stick, and uh, that's fine because I think the Crusaders are coming in next. My opponent, right after that combat, uh, reforms his unit like so, so there's a better picture of that. And with all that done, we go over here to bottom of two after movement, and there is some. Uh, his Pegasus, Paladin on a Pegasus or whatever, charges into my giant. It was a long charge, but he nailed it. Uh, his Crusaders, like I had kind of hoped, charge into my Saber Spider, and that was beautiful. His Knights now, that one in the unit, the, unit, uh, the Lance in the middle there, are completely blocked up now, so Saber Spider's doing his 40 points of work really well. Uh, the Reliquy is kind of blocked up in there, so that's great. His damsel on a pegasus on our left flank there, he moves up to keep shooting his skull splitter at my trappers, which kind of sucks. His green knight passes the leadership check and uh, marches past my bruisers, which puts them completely out of position, but it did stop him from charging into my guys, so I'm not too upset about that. And other than that, the little dragon lance guy, he moves around a little bit on the right flank, and everything else is exactly where you see it. There's a better picture of his paladin on a peg slamming into my slave giant. And there's a better picture of his Crusaders taking the bait. During his magic phase, he gets one of the spells off that gives that unit plus one strength, plus one toughness, which is kind of bad. Uh, I stopped a couple other ones, but that one actually did end up getting through, which hurts my feelings a bit. Uh, it... What was it? Uh, those unit that unit does not have spears and shields like it looks like they have paired weapons. So it's it's a, it's a little bit more devastating when you think uh, how many attacks are about to throw at my unit. And then over here, the damsel uh, changes her mind. She doesn't shoot at my trappers because the angle she took was all wrong. She can't see the trappers, so she shoots at Elizabeth and actually puts four woo or three wounds on her. So <laughs> she almost flat out killed her. <laughs> I'm like, ah, get a hold of the trebuchet quick, honey. <laughs> 
then uh, the, during the shooting phase, I believe his bowmen shoot at my tribesmen on the hill there and slip a wound through on him. And then his trebuchet hits or fires and hits directly. He doesn't misfire this time, <laughs> and it's a solid hit. Luckily for me, he doesn't roll all that great on the amount of wounds, uh, but he is still able to put three wounds through on the unit, killing a tribesman outright. So we go into combat, and the Saber 2 Spider is able to take out one of the little peasant crusader guys before they just beat the crap out of him. Then they oblige me by overrunning and slamming into the flank of my mercenary veterans. And here's where the gamble takes uh, is going gonna, is gonna to either pay off in dividends or is going to completely screw me and, and get my general killed. I just need one guy to survive with my general and their stubborn nine. Possibly with a reroll, I don't remember. But uh, like I said, big risk, hoping for a big reward. And then over here, the paladin completely flubs his attacks. My giant does something that does an auto wound to him with no armor saves allowed. He doesn't ward save it. Wound goes through his charge to my wound. Uh, they're, they're, we're tied, and we stand there and just kind of growl at each other. Then over here, uh, Lord Tremendous is able to kill two more of his knights. He's not able to do anything to me. Uh, I do two wounds to his banner. I win by one, but they're steadfast, and they don't go anywhere. Over here, things go pretty good. Not flawless, but pretty good. I do lose three of my Merc Vex, as you can see, but I kill a lot of the damn peasants up in front. I do a little bit of damage to the ones in my flank. I lose this combat. I'm stubborn nine, and I make my break check. Now my tribesmen units will be able to hit these guys in the flank in the rear beautifully and hopefully destroy them and be able to turn and face the knights and stuff like that and catch their charge. After the combat, my opponent reforms that uh, unit of Peasant Crusaders or whatever, uh, like so, which I'm fine with because that just makes it a better uh, flank charge for me. It does stop me from getting a rear with the smaller unit of Tribesmen, but that's fine. I, I just want to slam into the flank here and do some decent work, you know what I mean? So here we go, top of three after movement, and I've charged my uh, tribesmen unit with my BSB slam into the flank of that Crusader unit, and I'm thrilled about that. Uh, the rest of my army is either in combat or, or, you know, not really have a viable charge. I thought about putting my tribesmen with my character into the flank of that Pegasus guy, and then I thought, you know what, the giant's fine, he's going to hold him up there for a little while, he's stubborn 10, he's not going anywhere, so why not? I'll leave him here, maybe he'll even kill him, who knows. So the tribesmen move up to better go after that unit on the hill, the, the bowmen, the trebuchet, just in case Elizabeth doesn't pull it off, or countercharge that reliquy and the flank of the light lance unit. Either way, where with where they're positioned, uh, my level two Laura Fire or Path of Fire Shaman is stupid and stumbles forward like four inches. Uh, my my uh, what's it called? My Scratapult tries to charge his Paladin in the flank there and fails, so he ends up right where you're looking. And then the Bruisers on the left flank just kind of turn to to they reform without a musician, so they just kind of turn in place and face that direction, and they'll be looking for targets of opportunity as time goes on. There's a better picture of my Scratapult failing this charge, and while I'm not thrilled about that, I'm not devastated either. It would have been nice, it would have been convenient, it was a charge of opportunity, but I failed it, so opportunity missed. There's a better picture of my Shaman being stupid. I rolled a 10, and he stumbles forward like 4 inches. It really, really sucks. Uh, but I'm like, you know what? I'm supposed to fail one out of you know every six tests. I get that. This is where I figure out he's only level uh, leadership seven, but seven is the easiest thing to roll on two d six. So I'm hoping that this is the last time it happens. And here's a better picture of the train wreck that this combat's becoming. I'm really looking forward to putting some hurt down on that big unit of crusaders. Oh, and I completely forgot. Elizabeth did charge and get into the trebuchet. That's important. Nothing happens in the magic phase. I just do complete crap in it. So we go into shooting phase, and my trappers fire away at the bowmen. They kill two more, which is great because it forces the panic check, which they wholesale fail and begin fleeing towards uh, the right flank there. That's it for shooting, so we go into combat, and Lady Elizabeth is able to just destroy every last member of the trebuchet team, which is good because I didn't want my ogres taking any more shots. One was bad enough. We go to combat over here, and Lord Tremendous is able to destroy, I think, one more guy. Uh, I think he wins this combat again, uh, because I have a wound to his banner. 
Uh, he has a musician, so yeah, he wins. I make my break check, and we stick it out. But next turn, I'm going to try to pulverize his damsel and at least work on his magic phase a little bit. And then over here, it's just an epic bloodbath. As you can see, a ton of peasants die. The rest of my mercenary vets die. Uh, I think I take one wound onto my tribesmen. It's absolutely brutal. And this is where I find out that the Crusaders are actually stubborn. So... <laughs> I was like, oh no! I had no idea. But I do win this combat by a landslide, uh, and, and I'm very pleased about that. But yeah, the Crusader guys that I'm in the flank there are, are stubborn, and I had no idea. In the end, it works out, though. Uh, his peasants or whatever, they flee. I can't pursue because the stubborn guys stick around. But we're still into him. He can't reform again because I'm in him in two sides. So we're sitting here. I know the knights and the relic way are coming probably next turn. Uh, but that sucks, I know. But I, you know what? We're, I'm looking at it, and I don't think his knights can wheel past the, the crusaders. And, and hit me so they can't charge I know the relic we can but I don't know what this thing can do so I wouldn't mind if it came into combat I got a strength 7 uh, con over there BSB just begging to put that huge sword into something why not a relic we? so this is working out nice I did lose all my mercenary veterans but I'm very pleased about how this all worked out how I got to hold all these infantry and hopefully I'll be able to kill them all off and break open some more knights very soon and over here, once again, he completely fails to uh, wound my giant. I'm able to do one more wound to him. I think I rolled the exact same thing where he takes an auto wound with no armor save. And uh, it gets past his ward or whatever he's got. And I, uh, I win this combat by one, but he's got a high enough leadership that he doesn't break. And we stick it out for another turn. So we go over here to bottom of three after movement, and there is some. I was right. That huge unit of knights that lands there, they could not wheel past the uh, Crusaders, and it was an illegal charge. So what ends up happening is he charges out his BSB, and he charges Reliquy into my tribesman slash BSB's unit, which is fine because, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to be able to get enough combat res by killing all the infantry that it's not going to matter what these guys do. I should be able to break them all, and uh, hopefully be able to run some guys down because uh, although the guys are stubborn hey it could happen it's worth it's worth hoping uh, I believe his bowmen rally and uh, that's really I think the green knight charges into Elizabeth and that sucks but I'm thinking even to, unless he kills her outright and overruns here my tribesmen are gonna charge his green knight and Elizabeth has done some crazy things she's only got one wound left but there's a there's a chance she'll survive it also the little uh, pallet on a Pegasus that was on my right flank charges into the flank of my tribesmen that's in the big combat. Not the most exciting turn of events for me, I know, but I'm interested to see what's going to happen. But yeah, that's pretty much it for movement. There's a better picture of his reliquary, the BSB, and the other Paladin on a Pegasus slamming into this combat, and nobody invited these guys. They're very, very rude. And there's a better picture of the Green Knight slamming into Elizabeth, and I'm hoping she can put a wound or two on him, but I'm thinking that maybe she's dead. During his magic phase, he's able to get that plus one strength, plus one toughness uh, spell off again on his infantry. Not great, but I, I have to deal with it. And then during the shooting phase, his damsel throws me for... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, during the magic phase as well, he gets lightning bolt off on my bruisers and kills one outright, forcing the panic check. My bruisers fail the panic check spectacularly and run like 9 or 10 inches directly away from the damsel. They will never live that down. During the shooting phase, his damsel is able to target my trappers and takes out four of them, if you can believe it. The cool part about this is he actually makes his panic check. The one remaining trapper makes his panic check and actually probably saves me, you know, what, half the points for that unit. So, 20 points, but I'll take him. Then over here, his Green Knight attacks Elizabeth, and she's able to save the one wound he does to her. He flubs really bad. His dice are rolling really poorly. I'm not even going to lie to you. And uh, he wins this combat because he got a charge and a rear and all that, but Lady Elizabeth is unbreakable. So he loses, or he wins this combat. I'm not going anywhere. I take her leadership check because we're really not clear on that. And uh, I figure I, I lost, but he, she's unbreakable, so she takes a full leadership check. She she took it and was able to turn and face him. So, God, she's good. 
So then we go into this combat over here. I end up in a challenge with my lord against his uh, little Pegasus guy that flew in, and I kill him, but not before he does two wounds to me. I lose a tribesman and a half in combat. He loses a bunch of his infantry. I don't do anything to his BSB, and I put a couple of wounds, two or three wounds for my BSB into his uh, reliquary, which is great. I win this combat. I'm all excited. And then it turns out that the BSB's got some sort of virtue that makes them stubborn. The reliquary is stubborn and the infantry is stubborn. So all three units I'm currently in combat are stubborn. So my best laid plans and everything in order to break these units and run them all down are completely worthless because every unit I'm in combat with is stubborn and they all make their break check. I have got way too much work cut out for me now. <laughs> Oops. So we go into this combat over here, and now his damn paladin has decided to up his game a little bit. He does two wounds to my giant. I'm not able to do anything more to him. He wins by two. I'm stubborn ten, and I make my check. And then as promised, we go into combat over here, and I beat the damsel to death. I do two or three wounds to her, uh, I think just two, and uh, I win this combat because I've killed, I did a wound to his, to his banner. He's got like yeah, I think I win by one, and they break, which is absolutely fantastic. I restrain from pursuing so I can turn and go after that other unit of la uh, knights that are set up over there because it's a beautiful flank charge. I just can't ignore. I thought about charging the peasants next turn and try to getting them off the table, but to be perfectly honest with you, they're below 25%, uh, so I think they're going to go off the table by themselves. I believe the knights are going to go off by themselves because the leadership is cut in half and they're too far away from the BSB for it to matter, so I restrain pursuit and I turn so I can go after those knights before they become a problem uh, for my tribesmen or God only knows what else. So we go over here to top of four after all that was said and done, and there's not a ton of movement. My tribesmen with Kaka Shabadu slam into the Green Knight uh, because I'm just trying to help out Elizabeth as much as I can, if I can, you know what I mean? Uh, Lord Tremendous slams into the flank of the knights because I end up deciding I'm going to charge in there. I don't even think about charging those peasants after the initial thought of it because I'm kind of stupid. I should have charged them and then redirected into the knights, but I didn't. And uh, it was an oversight on my part. Uh, my chariot moves up because he really doesn't have anything to shoot at anymore. I'm going to take a pot shot at his uh, damsel on a, on a pegasus, but that, that's really all I've got left. I can't see anything anyway, so why not? Uh, the Path of Fire level 2 Shaman with Troll Eater is stupid again and goes forward an inch. And other than that, everything else I have is dead or in combat. There's a better picture of Lord Tremendous slamming in that unit of knights, and that, I'm hoping, goes really well. And there's a better picture of my tribesmen slamming into the Green Knight. Oh yeah, I forgot, my bruisers also continue to flee. They did not make their rally check. And there's a better picture of my shaman continuing <laughs> to be stupid. I'm starting to really second-guess the whole troll-eater big-name thing. <laughs> I don't like stupidity on my casters. Absolutely nothing happens in magic or shooting, so we go into combat, and Elizabeth gets killed. I'm able to slip one wound through on the Green Knight, so he does a wound, I do a wound, I have charge, flank, super flank, banner. I think I might even charge downhill. I think I win by four or five, and he's otherworldly, so he implodes. And then we overrun like champions into that damn damsel that's been kicking the crap out of my whole left flank here. I'm glad to be a holder, or gotten a hold of her at least. Over here, it's looking really bad for my giant. His paladin is able to do two more wounds to him. I'm not able to do anything back to him. I lose by two, but I'm stubborn ten and I make my check, but my giant circle in the drain. Uh, he needs to slip another wound through on this guy yesterday or it's he's dead. In this combat, uh, I beat the crap out of more infantry. I'm not able to do anything to his BSB. Uh, I do, I think, one more wound to his Grail Reliquy thing, and, and that's it. I win this combat. I don't think I take any more damage. I win this combat, but it doesn't matter. Everybody's stubborn and everybody sticks. We go into combat over here, and I'm only able to kill one of the knights. I gotta imagine at this point, Lord Tremendous' swinging arm has gotta be pretty tired. Uh, but with charge, flank, and a wound to his banner, I win by two, but he's steadfast. 
and he still breaks. Not only does he break, but the peasant bowmen that are near him, they panic as well. They flee from the closest unit, which was uh, tremendous. I know it's not the closest, uh, or it's not it's not perfect with the flee, but we just went with it. We were running out of time. I had to be home. I have a curfew. The wife will beat me if I don't get home in time. But uh, as you can see, everyone is fleeing from tremendous, and that's the way the world should work. Everyone should flee in terror from the majesticness that is Lord Tremendous. So we go over here to bottom of four after movement, and there's really none other than the fact that I believe his peasants and that little unit of knights both rally. They're both at below 25%. They're both at half leadership, and he rallies. The unit of knights that was fleeing uh, towards the hill, they rally. And I think even his peasant bowmen rally. It drives me nuts, but... He does it, what can you do? There's a better picture of his knights rallying. There's a better picture of the peasants and the other unit of knights rallying. Uh, during his magic phase, I don't remember what the spell is called that he gets off, but basically allows him to re-roll his attacks and I think his wounds. I'm not 100% on that. But he throws five dice at it with his uh, caster that just got charged by the tribesman and gets it off. He gets it off with overwhelming power, however, and is uh, ends up rolling a miscast two on the dot, which is uh, kind of bad because I've got my guys right on top of the dam. My guys are at ground zero, which really kind of sucks. Needless to say, the damage causes four wounds to my no three wounds to my unit, killing one of my tribesmen outright. But since it was five dice, he just picks his character up afterwards. And so his uh, damsel on the Pegasus with the skull split and everything is no longer a problem because she's currently in the hell that she so right righteously deserves. <laughs> We go into combat, and yeah, he murder death kills my giant with that uh, buff spell. But you know what? It was probably going to go that way regardless because his his uh, paladin definitely rallied and started carving up my giant the past couple of combats. So we go over here to the top of five, and I charge. Uh, Lord Tremendous goes back in that unit of knights that rallied because I want to finish him off. Uh, my... Uh, Scratapult moves up a little bit in the off attempt to maybe shoot at the Pegasus Knight and put that last wound on him. The tribesmen with Kakashabadu turn around and their hope is just to get in there and do anything before the game is over. And uh, my Trapper moves up to try to throw possibly at the uh, Paladin, but I don't think he's in range. Also, once again, I believe my uh, level 2 is stupid and moves forward another inch. I'm not taking Troll Eater again. There will not be a second game with Troll Eater. There's a better picture of my Shaman being stupid again, and he moves <laughs> forward like literally one inch. Yeah, the Troll Eater thing, it seemed like a good deal, but no. In the end, it was righteously stupid for me to take. There's a better picture of Lord Tremendous slamming into those knights, and I'm hoping he can finish what he started. Oh yeah, these guys rally too. My bruisers rallied at the very corner of the table, which is great because they saved me all those points, but this will be the last you see of them in this battle report because I forget all about them after this. During the shooting phase, my Scratapult direct hits, and it's a solid hit. I get a lot of guys. Unfortunately, I just can't seem to roll the wound with this thing today, and uh, I only killed two of the guys, which isn't even enough for a panic. But hey, two more guys ate it, so that's something at least. So we go into combat over here, I'm able to finish off the reliquy thing, I finish off about five or six more of the little infantry guy, but I end up in a challenge with the BSB, and I'm not sure if the challenge happened this turn or last, but my general gets killed, like just flat out pimp slapped by this guy. Uh, I win this combat, I think, uh, but they're of course stubborn and not going anywhere, but holy crap, my general just got smoked by a hero choice. <laughs> And now that my general's dead, he's no longer hitting two sides, so he reforms his infantry like that, which is going to give me more attacks, I think, but at the same time, it's going to give him more attacks, so double-edged sword. And then we go into combat over here, and Tremendous is able to kill one more knight. They can't do anything back to him. Uh, I win this combat, but they're steadfast, and they stick their ground. Not a huge big deal. I'll get him. So we go over here to bottom of five, and his rallied unit of knights in the back right there charge into my tribesmen and make it. His infantry really doesn't have anywhere to go, so they just kind of turn to go for any attack opportunity they can get. 
And uh, other than that, I think everything else he has is dead or in combat. No, that's not true. His uh, paladin killed my uh, giant, charges in the tremendous in the flank, and makes it. Other than that, everything is dead or in combat. There's a better picture of those knights slamming into my tribesmen, and I'm not too concerned about that. I think, if anything, that's just going to be kill secured. I'm hoping. And there's a better picture of his paladin on a peg slamming into the flank of Lord Tremendous. And I'm not as worried about that either, because I figure I'm going to issue a challenge, or he's going to issue a challenge, and we're going to beat the ever-loving crap out of each other, and I'm hoping that with my superior saves, I'm able to mitigate it, do some damage, win this combat, and break the knights. That's the hope. There is no magic or shooting on his end, so we go into combat, and yeah, this is exactly what happens. We end up in a challenge, and I end up decimating the guy. I don't remember how many wounds I end up doing to him, but it is enough that I win combat, and his knights break, even though they were steadfast, and run away. And the reason there's only two left is because he had to take dangerous terrain checks, uh, DT3s, for going through my uh, tribesman unit going through my scrappling and then through the forest right there because he was fleeing so we took three different sets of dangerous terrain checks and in the end uh two guys were left so all in all that really worked out well for me like stupid well then over here my tribesmen you got to give it up to them they finish off the peasants they kill every last one to a man uh my bsb i think is in a challenge with his bsb and we i can't touch him he can't touch me which is good uh his knights and everything like that with his uh they're able to kill one tribesman and uh, i believe i win this combat Yep, I do. And those knights continue running. Uh, his BSB, who is stubborn, sticks it out. So we go over here to top of six after all that is over and done with, and it, it's no real charge or anything like that. My damn shaman is stupid again. Uh, my tribesmen turn to face the bowmen and the, and the knights that are fleeing. Lord Tremendous moves up to, I don't even know, watch the fight between the BSB and the tribesmen and, the, and his BSB. My uh, catapult guys move up to try to take a pot shot at his knights, and my trapper turns to fire his uh, last couple of three own weapons into the knights that are fleeing through his forest. That's about it. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, that's not right. The tribesmen charged a bowman who had rallied and they fled to get away, which was probably smart. During a magic phase, I can't remember what spell I get off, but it's definitely the Path of Butchery. Go figure. And uh, I think it's the Bone Cruncher one, where it's like no armor, or armor piercing six, and I finish off the two knights because I'm not taking that chance again. Unfortunately, I was a little, um falls to the wall with it, I guess, a little uh, reckless, and I overwhelming power it with, uh, I think it was at least four dice, maybe five, I can't remember, but it was enough, I roll a miscast three and send my caster straight to hell after the damsel. Maybe he wanted to go and, and check notes with her, I don't know, but yes, I, in order to secure the unit of knights, I killed my level two caster. Not as bad as it could have been, this just further uh, reiterates my point where it was better for me personally to have two sh regular shaman than uh, a great shaman so these are points i can afford to lose you know what i mean the damage that the resulted miscast causes does kill another tribesman they pass their panic check but just barely in the shooting phase my scratapult fires a beautiful direct hit right on top of the bowmen that are currently fleeing and i kill two out of the three ah uh, kill not secured and then over here in combat, I'm able to slip a wound through on his BSB, finally, uh, but he's still stubborn. I think I win this combat, and he's still stubborn, and he doesn't go anywhere. So with that, we go over here to bottom of six after movement, and there's none. Uh, his one remaining knight flees through the forest, loses his buddy, and that is it. The only other thing he's got on the table is the BSB, and it's in combat. There's a better picture of the one remaining knight uh, fleeing towards the board edge, uh, minus his little buddy now. And his bowmen continue to flee as well. I completely forgot it failed the rally. We go into combat over here, and nothing happens. I have two banners to his one. I win this combat, and uh, he doesn't care. He's stubborn with the reroll. He's not going anywhere. What a magnificent bastard his BSB was. <laughs> And there it is, everyone. There's the end of the game. What a brutal, just exhausting <laughs> slugfest. 
Oh, everything from my guys getting into combat with three step separate stubborn units. The relic we gives those infantry guys a lot of rerolls and different craziness, hatred, frenzy, all sorts of just murder, death, kill kind of stuff. Really, really tough. I lost so many guys. My poor mercenaries having to be bait, and it worked so well. But in the end, everyone, including the general, died. Just crazy crazy magnificent game and uh i'm exhausted just retelling the tale so i'm gonna take a break and then i'm gonna come back and we're gonna do the recap and uh yeah this game is over that's it man game over man it's game over so in the end it was a victory a very hard fought victory for lord tremendous I got 2,182 out of him, he got 1,438 out of me for a difference of 744 points. So definitely a solid victory, but holy crap. I lost Berserk, Kaka, half my tribesmen, half my trappers, uh, Kin Eater, the Giant, the Saber Spider, and my Mercenary Vets. My victory party literally has half a dozen people at it. <laughs> I mean... The sa uh, just is just, just an absolutely crazy, crazy difficult game. Uh, the Saber Spider really won me the game by chaffing up his knights, having his, uh, his uh, uh, crusaders charging into them and then slamming into my uh, mercenary vets so that the rest of my stuff can counter charge. That was all the Saber Spider and I'm grateful. Uh, the Scratapult was right on target. Unfortunately, my wounds to roll weren't. Uh, my my rolls to wound weren't. That sucked. Uh, my trappers were absolutely phenomenal, taking care of the bowmen. If I had remembered they could march and shoot, they probably would have taken the trebuchet for me. And uh, who knows what else. And then, of course, uh, I learned a lot in this game, too. Taking Troll Eater on my Leadership 7 Shaman was really stupid. That guy was... was he literally failed his stupid checks uh, four out of six turns, which uh, made him completely useless. I'm not even going to lie. My opponent had some crazy cool setups, though. That damsel on a Pegasus with the Skull Splitter, the shooting gun thing, was way more dangerous than I realized. The way he was able to take out my trappers and stuff with that thing was super dangerous. Uh, his BSB's kit, I'm not exactly sure what he had, I know it's at the beginning of the video, was a face melter. Took out my general and probably would have taken my BSB out after enough time. All those stubborn units he brought to the table were unbelievable stop my whole army dead all the momentum I had was stopped dead I just got lucky that I was rolling better than him because if it had been the other way around this game would have had a much different ending and uh, you know what I'm, I'm I know it's uh, I've taken some tweaks I've done some things to my list I'm not done obviously I still need to uh, tweak a thing or two here or there but all in all I, I'm pretty happy with the changes I like the new direction I'm still gonna change some stuff up uh, I want to get rid of the stalker standard off my merc vets and to be perfectly honest with you I'm debating on whether I need a great con still kind of mulling that one over in my head I have some ideas uh, and, and stuff like that the giant is kind of losing favor with me I'd like to go over to a uh, frost mammoth and give him a shot for a while so I've, I've got some things in the works so we will see what happens very soon but as always, this was an absolutely fantastic game. This is a great opponent, and this is only the second game I played against him. I cannot even imagine the nightmare list he's going to come up with eventually. That's just going to make it so that I can't sleep anymore. <laughs> but that being said, I'm very, very much looking forward to the rematch. Real quick, guys, while I got your attention, the Ninth Age U.S. Masters voting has begun. I think it goes on until, like, uh, the 25th or the 30th or whatever. Uh, it's got to be at least the 30th. Uh, but if you live in the United States, uh, go to the website. It's in the description. It's just a Ninth Age one. And cast your vote. Uh, Midwest and Mid-Atlantic guys, you guys have a lot of guys trying to be your uh, your, your, your Ninth Age U.S. Masters uh, voting reps. So if you live in those areas and that might be something that you're interested in, you definitely want to go to the website before it's too late. Cast your vote and get the guy in the seat that you want in the seat. Alright guys, one more thing. Uh, there's a thing called Universal Battles out there. If you know what it is, 
Uh, the guy who created, I think it's the guy who created it, is looking for help. He's trying to design it uh, to have better support other games, and he's looking for somebody uh, that has experience with any program that allows you to draw on a computer. Photoshop, GIMP, Corel Draw, etc. If you have any skills with these particular programs uh, and you're interested in helping out, please get in touch with him. The way to do that will be in my description. I know what you're thinking. What the hell do I get for using all my skills to make this guy's program better? Well, of course you're going to be credited on the Universal Battles website, so now you're published and everything like that, and you have, you know, working works for you, like your resume or whatnot. And then you and your friends would also get a lifetime membership for Universal Battles Pro. Now you can play Universal Battle Pro or Universal Battles uh, for free, but uh, with a, as a pro member, you get a lot of more bells and whistles and stuff like that. And it's like thirty to forty bucks in order to get that if you're you know just a peasant like myself. But if you're one of the creators and everything like that and looking to get your name out there, not only do you accomplish that here, but you save yourself 30 to 40 bucks uh, and get full access for the rest of your life to an excellent program that lets you play excellent games excellently whenever you excellently want to, which is excellent. So yeah, if you want to help out or something like that, just check out the link in my description. It'll show you how to get to Universal Battles uh, forum where you can throw out your name or application or whatever support you want to get. Alright guys, I think I've talked long enough and this battle report has literally exhausted me. It was such a good game. Such a hard fought game from turn 1 to turn 6. Uh, but as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. But yeah, guys, thanks.